Hello, welcome back to Revender in Sports and another edition of My Road to PBP. That's Paris, Brest, Paris. I'll put more information down in the show notes or description. Tomorrow, I have a 400 kilometer event, so that's 250 ish miles. And I wish to show you the bike I'll be riding some of the choices I've made for setup, and of course I'm in my industrial park parking lot. <laughs> so there's going to be some cars coming and going. Hopefully you can hear me just fine. I've taken some advice and I've gotten a remote mic and let's get going. All right, so what we have is the Ritchie Road Logic in a size 55 a lot of folks have asked me what size I ride, how tall am I, all that other stuff. So for some of you, um, let's do that real quick. So I'm 5'9", I have really long legs, and I, I like a bike that actually fits me. A lot of folks ride bikes that are too small, I'm, and I'm saying this from a fitter's perspective. People come in and their head is well over the handlebars, and uh, the weight distribution on the bike is not very good that way. So I ride a 55 my, with the crank arm all the way down and along the seat tube axis up to the top of the saddle, that's 95 centimeters. So not from the bottom, not from the middle of the bottom bracket because I don't measure there. Okay, so let's get on with the bike. Let's start from the begin, from the front end and work our way back. Um, Durace build, most of you have seen this bike before, but if you're new to the channel, this is a Ritchie Road Logic from 2014-ish. Uh, they don't do yearly models, they just have a colorway and it goes for a few years. But this has a Durace build, an R9100, which I think shifts exquisitely, and I, I just, I don't have... Uh, a need or a want for electronic shifting because this shifts so, so, so well. Okay, so right at the very beginning, I do want to talk about the fact that I've got some 30 mil tires on here. And in the past, I've derided folks because um, I generally ride 25 or 28 tires. I gravel with 28 tires. But I couldn't find any 28 tires in time for this event from my distributors. So I had to buy these from another bike shop. And, um, you know, we just keep each other supplied in one way or another. So if you look here, this is a 30 mil tire. Um, it is quite close, but I, I just don't think that's gonna be a problem. The fork has plenty of clearance. And then we're gonna go look at the chainstay real quick before I forget. And there's plenty of space there as well. So, <laughs> I mean, I could probably put a 32 in here without a problem. So right inside here on both sides, just plenty of clearance, so we're good. So that's a 30 mil tire on a 25 external rim. And uh, the spec is only supposed to be good for 28 tires. There is an updated version of this Ritchie that's supposed to take 30 tires. So I'm guessing you can put 32s in that one, no problem. They measure at 30.5 on this 25 wide rim. So very close to true to size. All right, next thing, you'll also notice I have got reflective tape on the bike in um, several places. And then on the back, I like to use red just because it's more similar to tail lights of a car so hopefully a motorist as we're riding in the dark recognize oh that's another car or another motor vehicle or something now the front end i've got two headlights and both of these are exposure lights and they're part of the uh, what they call their commuter line so the series line and Osiris, I guess you'd say. Now, this black one here is 750 lumens. This one's 850 lumens. And they're both programmable. So if you look on 
if you look on the back of this, you will see there are program modes on the first column, there's high, medium, and low, and you just set the modes by pushing this button, and you're able to say, okay, if I want my um, high, or let's call it low, because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to run both of these on low. If I want the battery to last 36 hours, I would go to program number three, and then whenever I put it on low, it'll run for 36 hours. In this case, I put it on low for 10 hours because we are starting at 5 a.m. and my goal is about 15 hours. So at 5 a.m. till 6.55, that'll be sunrise, so two hours there. And then anything after 7 p.m., which is sunset, uh, I'll put the, the headlight back on. Inside this bag, I have a battery pack with all the assorted cables for charging the Wahoo, which, you know, says about 15 hours, 16 hours maybe, but, you know, why take that chance? So I'm going to bring a charging cable and a battery pack. The headlights should be fine, but my phone, my phone is an issue because uh, it's, a, it's an older phone and uh well two years it's not that old but two years but the battery life um, if i'm using it consistently or constantly during an event especially if i'm taking video or um, things like that or listening to music it, it does drain the battery and you know i get a, i don't get 15 hours of battery life out of my phone anymore so i've got phone cable wahoo dedicated cable and um, and then a uh, cable for the headlights. But everything about riding endurance events in an unsupported format is you just need redundant systems. So I have a redundant headlight. I have a redundant taillight. Now let's talk about the taillight for a minute. This Seigo light uh, is a 350 lumen taillight. And one of the things I like about it, it's got seven modes. And on one of the modes, which is a triple flash, these two buttons here, one turns it on. So we'll do that real quick. Okay. And so that's your triple flash. And that triple flash, you can modify how fast or how slow it blinks with this. That triple flash will give you a minimum of 34 hours burn time and up to 100 hours of burn time. So you don't really have to worry about your taillight going out um, on a, let's say, a, a 400K. But maybe on a 600K or a 1200K, you know, you may worry about it. But in this case, things happen. He taillights fall off. Uh, taillights stop working. Uh, this little port down here, sometimes you have to, well, not sometimes, you should put a piece of electrical tape covering that port. So I will do that today. And, uh, you know, just things happen. Or one of your riding mates, uh, that happened yesterday on a ride. Uh, one of my riding mates, her taillight wasn't working. And so I had a spare just in case uh, because I basically had my bike set up as of yesterday. Uh, for this event tomorrow on Saturday. Gearing wise, a 5339 with an 1130. Now, I like this gearing. I sometimes, um, you know, I a lot of times I ride an 1128, but I'm loaded. Um, and speaking of loaded, this bike is sub 17 pounds uh, without water bottles. So it'll have pedals computer mounts, you know, everything, um, except, well, I shouldn't say everything. It doesn't have a toolkit on it and it'll be sub 17 pounds. I've got a video of it, but when you're loaded down, why not take the 30? Um, I've got a 32 on a different set of wheels. I just didn't feel like swapping it out. <laughs> so I put it on this. So I put this wheel set on and speaking of wheels, probably this is the last, uh, brevet I'm going to do with these. Uh, 46 depth. 
I will probably now switch over to my um, the Arden, which is the low profile wheel. It has exposed nipples. If I ever need to true the wheel while I'm out, while I'm out on the road, I can just true the wheel. Also, it's a um, it, it's a wheel that de it, the wind conditions will not matter. Um, I've got a 60 millimeter wheel set that I've got on a different on the Bianchi XR4. Kind of, they kind of reside there, and then I've got this 46 that I move around from bike to bike. 46 mil but what I'll probably do is after this event for just because as the rides get longer things can break I've I've only broken one spoke on a head wheel front wheel once and it was probably I don't know many many years ago probably 10 years ago but you never know you never know okay brand new bar tape why well because once I've cleaned my bike, once I've uh, I degreased my chain and, and lubed it, and once I've done all that stuff, and in this case, brand new tires, just that fresh bar tape just gives me this, this feeling that, okay, the bike is clean, the bike is lubed, the bike is ready, and then mentally it gets me in the game, it gets me uh, race focused, and that's why I like fresh bar tape on an event. Now today, Nice and sunny. Uh, it's been raining day after day after day, and we're back to San Diego weather of uh, blue skies. So, you know, if I know it's going to rain, then I probably don't replace my bar tape. But in this case, I know it's going to be clear. We've got a low of about 45 with a high of about 68 for the day. So it's perfect weather for riding. Now, as I mentioned before about loaded, so this bike is sub 17 pounds without the frame pump and without a tool bag, but pedals, bottle cages, computer mounts, everything. Now in its current format, without fluid in the bottles, we're at just shy of 24 pounds. And then each bottle is two and a half pounds. So that's another five pounds. So this is gonna be about 30 pounds of rolling weight down the road. That's quite heavy, but you know, when you think about it, you need all the stuff. You, you don't know what you're going to run into, and everyone else is just as loaded as well. They've got spares for everything, uh, you know, spare, spare tubes, spare stuff, spare food. You just don't know. Uh, and just a funny little thing, if, if you... I always think of Gilligan's Island when I think about what I'm equipping myself on these long distance unsupported events. I think to myself, you know, these guys just thought they were going out on a three hour tour and they ended up on this deserted island for 15 years. So, you know, pack the stuff you think you're going to need and then something extra because you never know what can happen. Uh, as I move into the longer events, I'll probably start bringing spare spokes with me I was reading a, uh, an account or a recount of someone who did PBP, uh, the 1200 kilometer, 750 mile event. And within, before the first control, he got a fish hook, so he got a flat, and then he broke three spokes on his rear wheel, even though he had just had the wheel, wheels rebuilt. So you never know what can come down. Fortunately, he was able to find a wheel and, um, it was a low spec wheel, but you know what? Low spec wheels are more robust. They have more spokes. They don't use lightweight materials and they're more robust. Uh, in this tool bag up here, or in this top tool bag, um, the, I have the Dyna plug in here and then I have, you know, just some quick energy like gels and stuff. So each packet of gels, about 150 calories. So that's there. And for tactical or strategic things, I load up, I'm going to load up the barrel bag with, with, the, uh, with the majority of the stuff, keep, keep my pockets empty, keep my, um, you know, it, usually I just stuff my pockets and I don't carry something like, something like this, like let's say on a 200 miler, but you know, on a 200 miler I'm typically supported so I can just keep getting stuff at aid stations. This, you take it all 
or you buy it along the way and if you buy it along the way that takes time it takes time precious time off the bike uh, some folks have said oh these bottles are look ridiculous they're too big they should have no business being on a bike <laughs> I'm like people when you stop even as even if you think you're doing a quick stop for water or something or a bathroom stop you would not believe I mean if you set your stopwatch and you went in did what you had to do you bought something at 7-eleven or whatever and there's a lineup I mean it's gonna be 10 15 minutes before you get back on a bike I know I've timed it so it's best to just take as much with you and you don't stop you just keep rolling uh, with these two bottles 76 ounces of fluids I should be able to get through the 250 miles but uh, Barbara and Lori don't have uh, the capacity to carry these big bottles in their in their uh, frames their smaller frames so we'll have to stop and you know what it, it, we're we're only as fast as our slowest rider which could be me I could have a bad day out there and they have to wait for me they've had to do that in the past and um, and that's why we ride well together because we all were like the three amigos three musketeers I guess so you're only as fast as your slowest rider and if one of us has some issues during the day we just have to um, take care so that um, take care of each other so that all three of us get to the line um, together and safely uh, tool bag yeah just the common stuff two tubes two co2s tire lever multi-tool you know just the basic stuff uh, running tubeless as I mentioned before so the dyna plug so that that's your first line of defense uh, someone in a previous video said that the silica sealant does not um, does not respond well or, or work well with co2 and I think that was one of the mistakes I made I got a puncture put the dyna plug in and then topped it off with co2 and then I think that that sealant got all clumped up so um, what else what else what else power meter pedals they're charged and um, and they're good for 50 hours so I should not have any issues on this event um, you know on PVP I'll have to figure out another solution because they've only got 50 hours of battery life but who knows what we're gonna do there and uh, hmm, I think that's it so if you've got questions you want to know why I chose this over that um, would have this would this have been a better solution for you drop them down below let's make uh, let's get a discussion going down below and in the meantime wish me luck this will be the longest unsupported ride I've done in quite some time so it's kind of new territory for me again I had I had kind of um, pulled away from unsupported events and I'd been doing a lot of supported events 500 milers with a crew vehicle so I'm, I'm back to the um, long distance riding without support so a little bit more challenging logistically what do you pack what do you what don't you pack and then how do you uh, sustain yourself for that distance so okay anyway that's all for today please like and subscribe We'll see you up the road.